The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and contributors, and are not those of WKYU-TV, its management, or WKU. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Topper Talk. Here in the house is Sean Williams. I'm your host, by the way. Are, are you, you're the oh, co-host. You can be host today. The I'll co-host. be co-host. All right. Woody White's in the house with us. Woody, thanks for being here. Glad to be here. Of course, we're, we're down a man again. It seems like we, we never can get back in the well, in Maybe the one day we'll together. all be here. It's I mean, we were last week, which is cool. It's but, tough. Uh, Shane is back Poor in Shane. the Paducah area, so uh, I know that makes a, lot, a couple of people here happy in the studio. So he's holding it down in Paducah, but hey, uh, me and Woody are holding it down for the TV show. And, of course, uh, you know we got lots of WKU sports to talk about. Of course, WKU coming off the uh, disappointing loss at Tennessee, 52-20. to loss, 20. for sure. Very tough loss, uh, kind of a tough way to take, especially when you consider what happened in the first quarter there. Uh, just kind of a bad luck, and honestly, a string of bad luck I've hardly ever seen before in a college football game. Uh, it definitely was unprecedented as far as what I've watched before. You, know? I mean, <laughs> uh, you think two or three turnovers all right, but you just kept going and kept going, man. It was it was brutal. Like, I never changed the channel from games, but I had to change it at least just to sort of change the mojo in the, oh, in the room okay. a little bit. Just I was going to say, man, you're not – uh, I just switched. In the top of pride. There, yeah, I mean, right? I switched for like 30 seconds and okay. calmed my blood pressure down and went back and watched it. <laughs> went and hit the heavy bag for yeah. about 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, but obviously a, a disappointing loss. Uh, you know, like I said, Tennessee was favored, but I think they were like 13 and a half point favorites going into the game. So you can only imagine a lot of what ifs if uh, that sequence in the bad scenario yeah. didn't happen. But, um, you know, uh, if you want to talk about the game, uh, we'll be doing a lot about that, talking a lot about that for the next few uh, minutes. Uh, tweet at us at Topper Talk TV. Uh, give us your uh, thoughts on the game, the Tennessee game, and also you can give us our predictions for next week's game against South Alabama. Uh, can the Toppers bounce back? I threw that out there on Twitter, so you guys tweet back at us. And uh, like I said, you know we hit a, you know opening kickoff. We take the ball down. A nice drive. We get a nice drive going. Looked great that first looked, drive. Looked great. Had a lot of third down conversions mm-hmm. as well. You know had a. Had uh, some big third down conversions and uh, got down there. Garrett Schwemann kicked, uh, I think, a 37-yard field goal. Got us on the board, three zip tops, and we're looking pretty good. Tennessee gets the ball, and our defense stops them, forces them to punt, and then uh, disaster kind of strikes. So, uh, so bad. Like I said, you know, in the first the first turnover, you know, you really look at it. Brandon Daddy, the pass was on the money to Tyler Taylor. perfect. You know, uh, Taylor just, I think, turned around late, didn't get his hands up in mm-hmm. time, just kind of went through his hands. Uh, looked like he hit his shoulder pads or his face mask, just, just bounced up in the air. It was a bad bounce for the football. And, of course, uh, the Tennessee defender just took it back to the house about 26 <coughs> yards for the touchdown. So, uh, you know, I ain't, looking at that, on the, you know, I'm down there on the sideline, you know, kind of on the other end of the field because I'm sitting there waiting for Western to score, mm-hmm. you know, come down the other end and, you know, getting uh, Tennessee's uh, – zone there and uh just never did happen i was i spent a long quarter so uh but yeah and then of course you know you kick off again and uh you know it's kind of the same not really the same thing happens this was just a flat out interception i mean the cornerback read the read the uh read the quarterback's eyes really well you know daddy threw it out there and he just kind of flat jumped the route on that one and just like you said, he had free sailing to the house. I mean, mm-hmm. there's 14 quick points right there for Tennessee. Me, that was even the only one of the five where I think you can legitimately say Tennessee made a good play <laughs> yeah, to get the turnover. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I mean, yeah, Daddy kind of telegraphed it a little bit, but he still made a good play to get there. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, uh, you know, you talk about that, you know, good momentum. It's kind of almost like the Kentucky game, you know, Kentucky game. They take the first drive, mm-hmm. they go down, score a touchdown. The same thing here. I mean, they, except they got a field goal, which is a yeah. good start in a hostile environment like Tennessee. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, just a just a pure momentum drowner right there, having those two picks, pick sixes, and then all of a sudden, you know, in the blink of an eye, it's fourteen to three, and you're down. When you were mm-hmm. just all of a sudden went down there, had a seven minute drive together, and then you're up three nothing and get off to a good start. But then it's just almost like the avalanche, and the wheels just kept falling off. Then after that, you know, you got uh, Keyshawn Simpson uh, trying to run to the outside. He gets stripped and uh, by the linebacker and. A recovery, short field, but then our defense, you know, on that possession, they came out there and, you know, did what they had to do. You know, Tennessee had a short field there. You know, I think they were set up inside the 20, and and uh, our defense went out there and did a really good job of holding them mm-hmm. to the field goal. So, uh, you know, kind of stopped a little bit of the uh, bleeding, but at that point it was kind of more like a hemorrhage bleed. <laughs> yeah, at that point I was like, okay, two-position game, we're still in this. Just calm down, get back in the flow of things, we'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. But, but uh, <clears throat> no. No, no. <laughs> Tennessee kicks it off again, and, of course, uh, you know, uh, Antonio Andrews gets the ball, and, 
uh, next play and just uh, get stripped from behind. Ball goes flying up in the air, and Tennessee's got another short field, and they uh, they punch that one in. And uh, you know, it just it just was like I said, five turnovers on six plays is you know it's something that you really don't see a lot in football. But it's kind of funny because I'm watching the Sunday night game last night between the Giants and the Cowboys, and sure enough, the Giants have five turnovers. Yeah. <laughs> I think after the third one, I told you, I said, man, Tom Coughlin must have been watching our game yesterday. <laughs> Little uh, Western That's right. went off on Tom Coughlin. But, yeah, I mean, it's just something you don't really see a whole lot. I mean, like I said, you're up 3 nothing, and then, you know, at the blink of an eye, you're down 31 nothing. You know, there at the start of the second quarter, they punched the last uh, – Last turnover in there, and Daddy threw another interception there, which actually the linebacker made a really great play, yeah. uh, you know, trying to intercept the ball. I mean, he made a really fantastic catch to, to snag an interception, but uh, still, they were set up with really good field position. I mean, it's just like one of those were turnovers. They just kept shooting themselves in the foot, and they did it five times over, and it resulted in 31 Tennessee points. And, you know, like I said, in the blink of an eye, it's 31-3, to three, and all the momentum you had in that first drive is just sucked away. Yeah, and definitely. But, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that uh, – you know, you always think about what ifs when it comes to games like that. You know, what if there wasn't that many turnovers, or mm-hmm. at least that sequence of turnovers that was so bad. But uh, you know, but you know, you got to give you got to give Western credit for one. You know, they're down thirty-one to three. They could have definitely shut the door down, and uh, but they uh, they fought back after mm-hmm. that. You know, mm-hmm. uh, they did a really good job. Uh, you know, Daddy, they kind of they kind of pulled the other switcheroo when Andrews, uh, you know, got the had the fumble. <laughs> Um, you know, Petrino threw in Leon Allen, kind of a change of pace. He came just kind of the change of pace running back last week. And, uh, you know, Leon came in there and, and did what Leon did last week. I mean, he had a Leon's, really good did a really good job. I think he had about games. 39 yards on four carries, and he had 28 yards receiving on that mm-hmm. drive as well. So, um, you know, like I said, he's really tough to stop. He's a bigger back, yeah. but he's also explosive, and he's got some nice speed too, and he was actually showing that off. He's as good of a combination of – speed and power of any running back I've seen here yeah. maybe ever. I mean obviously my history doesn't go back too far but uh, he's <laughs> definitely far, enough, far to, enough to know that he's a good player for success in yeah, the FBS sure. era right <laughs> but yeah I mean he did a he did a good job of coming in and being kind of the change of pace running back and mm-hmm. obviously let him down there and uh, scored the, the touchdown from one yard out but I mean he was running all over the place and it was hard for Tennessee to, to stop him yeah. and, and tackle him as well you know he's such a big body and, you know, once he gets going, he does have some speed to him. So, you know, that was something that uh, obviously gave, uh, you know, Western a little bit of momentum, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, after that debacle, you know, down 31-3, to it's 31-10. to You know, um, and then later on in the in the second quarter, toward the end of the second quarter, almost toward halftime, uh, special teams kind of shows up. Yep. Uh, the block punt by Tyler Higby. Um, you know, Higgle, Higby got through there and, and blocked the punt. We recovered it, had good field position. I think uh, Tennessee got like a – personal foul call on that so it got us on like Tennessee's eight yard line and and, uh, daddy was able to find Nicholas Norris uh, in the end zone right before halftime about six seconds left and that kind of cut the lead to uh, 31 uh, 17 so you know Western had uh, momentum going into halftime and uh, you know that's something kind of Petrino was really proud of his guys Mm -hmm. for doing you know they didn't lay down right there when it was 31 to 3 they actually got some momentum he said you know we actually were really in the game had the momentum but the one thing they needed to do in the second half that they didn't do was come out and stop Tennessee yeah. on their opening drive, and they didn't do that. Yeah, so. Tennessee just came out and you know, put it you know, right down our throats pretty much. They just went right down the field real fast and <laughs> uh, got that other touchdown. And, you know, at that point it was, I mean, still sort of in the game, but you kind of had that feeling there that it was like, well, that was kind of our chance to get back in it. And yeah, the defense, it the defense, you know, had been – solid all night you know and that's the one time that they really needed to step up and challenge and yeah. they didn't do it and uh even Petrino said in the post game and even today that um uh, you know there was some confusion in the secondary whenever uh Justin Morley hit uh I think it was uh Jonathan Johnson on that 37 yard uh pass that was kind of the big pass of the drive uh the big play of the drive and then of course a, a large dose of uh their running back Rajon Neal who is quite a he's quite a big uh guy it's to take down yeah. so uh you know, he kind of. I think he had about 23 yards on that uh, on that drive and punched it in from one yard out. So, uh, you know, it, it got to about 38-17 there, and you know, kind of after that, you kind of thought the sales were kind of let out of the uh, the momentum of uh, yeah, WKU. Yeah. So, um, 
you know, it's uh, just one of those things where, uh, you know, like I said, you know, and Petrino said it after the game, you know, you just can't shoot yourself in the foot that many times. Yeah. Nobody's going to win when you got seven turnovers, no matter who's on the schedule. But, uh, you know, you got to give them uh, credit for fighting back and uh, making it, you know, a pretty good ball game. Yeah. You know, at least there for a little bit there in the first half, you know, late in the first half when they came back. So, um, you know, licking our wounds and everything like that. The good thing is we got South Alabama coming up. That's, is that good news? I, I think it's good news. <laughs> they, they had a pretty good win this weekend, beat Tulane. Yeah. Uh, Tulane, not necessarily a football powerhouse, but, uh, I mean, when you're a young program like South Alabama is, you know, any win at the – 1A level is, is a good win. Yeah, so, exactly. Um, I, I still like our chances to go down there and, and do pretty well. Yeah. I uh, think, uh, what's the line right now? We're up at like 10 and a half points. 10 and a half yeah, for so. us is the last I saw. So, so obviously, uh, maybe uh, South Alabama is a good, uh, a good uh, thing to have coming up Saturday, yeah. opening up conference play against a team like South That's Alabama, who's relatively a new program. They are. I think they've only been around since 2009. This is their first full-blown year in uh, Sunbelt conference play. So they're kind of uh, – one of those is trying to establish themselves as a football program. So, uh, yeah. I think it's going to be a game where we still have to go down there and be hungry for a win. Cause they, Definitely. Uh, I mean, they're obviously excited to get into the Sun Belt play now. They're going to be fired up for the game. And, you know, sort of they see that Western Kentucky, they're still going to know that's, you know, a pretty good program mm-hmm. to, to go after. So, uh, so they're going to be fired up trying to get a win. So we're going to have to play well. We're not going to go down there and sleepwalk through it. But Yeah. I think, uh, you know, Petrino addressed that today in his press conference as well. You know, a, a lot of a lot of talk is after a loss like you had in Tennessee, you know, where do you go to the next day when you're in the film room mm-hmm. watching all your mistakes, you know, how your player is going to respond. He said they responded really well. Um, you know, they're really confident and upbeat. Um, you know, they've kind of put that game behind them, and they yeah. need to. You know, I mean, they need to. It was a bad, it was a bad game. You know, they shown a lot of positives too. I mean, you look, honestly, you look at the stats. I mean, we outgained them by like yeah. 10 yards. And we got gained them by, I think we were out gained them by 111 yards going into the fourth quarter. So, I mean, we were out gaining them on offense. Yeah. It's just the, you give a team 31 points like that, and, you know, it's just not going to work out yeah, too yeah, well. Yeah, it's never going to well, for and sure. Plus, and plus in the second quarter, too, you know, they got, uh, Western got down there in the red zone. Dowdy uh, kind of threw an ill-advised ball, and it got intercepted mm-hmm. in the end zone. So there was another scoring chance for the Hilltoppers yeah. to get back into it. So, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of things they can work on correct, and uh, you know, that's what Petrino said they're going to focus on. They've, and they focused on it yesterday in the film room, and, and uh, especially, you know, everybody's talking about Daddy, how he would respond after right. having a, a game like that. You know, having he threw, you know, one touchdown pass but had five interceptions. But he still went 17 for 34 with 222 yards, which yeah. isn't a bad performance, you know, when you consider what happened, you know. And uh, I think he, uh, you're going to respond well. You know, it's almost like, you know, you gotta. You almost have to roll with Daddy. Daddy's shown that he knows the playbook. And you know, I know Demarcus yeah. Smith came in at the end of the game, but let's face it, Demarcus didn't look too I mean, good. There, there's not many people that's <laughs> as excited about Demarcus Smith as I am. But after watching him play that series, you know, I mean, I still think he's going to be a good player for us eventually. But he, he looks not at the moment. He looked a little intimidated. I'll I mean, be all right with Demarcus Smith if he just came in and ran some read option. Yeah. And I mean, right. his 15 yard run looked good. Yeah, I mean, I mean he's a, he's a great athlete. I mean, he's a great athlete. You know, no doubt. But uh. I'd definitely be uh, more more confident if he threw short balls and yeah. did some read option and did some just runs. He's yeah, a good athlete. Like you said, I think Dowdy is a guy, though. I said, yeah, I tweeted that out and said, you know, regardless of the day's performance, I'm still confident that he's, mm-hmm. you know, the quarterback that can, you know, lead us to a Sun Belt championship. And ultimately, yeah. that's the goal. So, uh, you know, I've seen enough from him in two games to know he's definitely got the talent to Look, lead us there. Yeah, and, and like I said, you know, regardless of, you know, what happened at Tennessee, he still finished with, you know, Completed 50% of his passes, which is really good, you know, when you consider the type of day he had. And then, you know, we saw it in the Kentucky game as well, you know, doing right. such a great job leading the offense in that game. So, you know, he's got the talent and everything. You know he's going to learn a lot from this and uh, bounce back. And like I said, you know, South Alabama's kind of uh, – I think it's going to be a good antidote for uh, Western Kentucky to kind of get back in the groove. So, so uh, the whole idea of bouncing back is one that I've been anxious to see. Can You know, because you looked at – uh, how last season went, you know, season started off great, mm-hmm. had the Louisiana Monroe game here, and just such a deflating loss to lose to them like yeah. we did. And, you know, after that, you know, we sort of fell off pretty good. We mm-hmm. didn't have the same energy we played with early in the season. Um, lost a few games that we probably shouldn't have lost, yeah. honestly. So um, I'm hoping that the guys learn from that, too, and aren't going to have a letdown after a loss. I mean, obviously the Tennessee game was a win that they really wanted to have. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I saw several of them throughout the summer tweeting about going 12-0 and and beating <laughs> UK and UT and all that. It's but, always the goal at the beginning yeah. of the year, right? <laughs> uh, and now that, uh, you know, I think when we lost that goal last year of, you know, Kinda. sort of running that table, that 
players sort of – it seemed like they didn't want to play as hard after that. Yeah. So I'm hoping this is a learning lesson for them. They yeah, can you, go from that and still have that same fire that they had in both of these games. Yeah, you bring up a good point. I mean, last year after that loose end in Monroe, you know, it just seemed like, like FAU came in here and, yeah. and they beat us. I mean – you know, and they weren't a very good team at the time. Right. You know, you hope you don't see that happen, and I really don't think it will. And it, you know, everybody was talking about, um, you know, and even Western Kentucky was kind of the sexy pick from uh, the experts coming in. A lot in. of people picked. You know, yeah. a lot of people picked them uh, to be a, <coughs> or picked Tennessee to be on upset alert against us. And and uh, you know, if if we beat Tennessee, then we run the table and go twelve and zero. And it's always easier said than done. Yeah. You know, for and sure. and obviously, uh, you know, you look at our schedule, and I think the hardest game on the schedule. If we even thought about going 12 and 0, it was going to be the Tennessee game, yeah. just because it's at Tennessee, it's in Neyland Stadium, yeah, I mean, hostile environment, you know, a, a crowd that we're not used to playing in front of, you know, even though we played at Alabama, but it's just not on a consistent basis. It's a little bit different when you go into an environment like that once a year, right. as opposed to if you're playing in the SEC consistently and you, you know, play again. 70,000 plus people every week you know right. it's a different story so I mean definitely a hostile environment that was going to be the one game on the schedule that was going to be iffy you know mm-hmm. it would have been great to pull it off and you know if we hadn't had seven turnovers especially you know that bad sequence where we had five and six plays we might have hung you know we probably would have hung with them you know and we might have beat them you know who knows but, you know, I talked to you earlier about the article that uh, Rick Bozich wrote mm-hmm. for the, and, you know he Said, you know, Tennessee didn't really beat Western Kentucky. You know, Western yeah. Kentucky beat Western Kentucky. And, that, and that's, that's what I've been telling everyone. That's a good point. I mean, you know, and, and then, of course, you know, Tennessee Tennessee fans will kind of say, well, we, you know, we had we had some turnovers too, man. You know, we got to give us some credit. <laughs> give them credit, like I said. Go Vols, man. Go yeah, Vols. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hearing Rocky Top one more time, I think. But, uh, <laughs> How many times did they play Rocky gosh, Top? I quit you it was so bad. I had a bet. At least, like, 15 times in the first quarter. I had a bet with somebody that uh, my – prediction for Rocky Top being played was 54 and I think he went with 60 I'm Gosh, thinking 66 it's 67 so, it's not terrible like once or twice because it's a pretty cool like pep song fight song whatever you want to call it but when you hear it so much yeah it's funny too because oh, they they deliberately play Rocky Top whenever there's like momentum yeah. for like WKU like if they're driving those like and the fans start cheering this Rocky Top all of a sudden just for no reason. it's a cool little tradition to have I guess <laughs> when you're on the losing end of that hearing it over and over and over <laughs> so bad yeah but i mean going back to uh, what we were talking about as far as the schedule trying to run the table going 12 and 0 and kind of knocking down bcs doors obviously with this loss it's probably not going to happen you know right. a team like western and we're in the sunbelt conference we're gonna have to go 12 and 0 yeah. you know and we're gonna have to beat teams like tennessee in their place and have impressive wins like that on our resume to actually even think about knocking down the bcs door mm-hmm. and um, obviously that's not going to happen so i mean you know, you kind of throw that out the window now. But the next best thing is um, the Sun Belt schedule is manageable. Of course, we have tough games. We got Monroe, we got Lafayette, we got Arkansas State. You know, those are our three main uh, big-time competitors in the Sun Belt this year. And, um, you know, they're still yet to come. They'll be a little bit down the road. But it's still legitimately possible that Western Kentucky can go 11-1 and one this year. Definitely. And, I've and, hey, 11-1 and one Western Kentucky football. That's huge. That's pretty huge. You know, and then just having that one loss to Tennessee, which, you know, granted, they're they're almost like Kentucky, except they're a little bit better version of Kentucky. Mm-hmm. They're rebuilding their program, but they got better athletes. I'm anxious to see how the rest of their season end up going because I still think they're probably going to have a struggle in the mm-hmm. SEC, but the SEC East isn't really necessarily as good as it has been, I don't think. Yeah, you know, Florida seems not. a little down. It's not. Um, so it's going to be – I'm anxious to see how they'll do. Hopefully they'll win the rest of their games and our loss won't look that bad. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have a – I'm going to go out of limb here and say they'll probably have a tough time against Oregon next week. I, I think <laughs> I think they may struggle with that one. Yeah, for might sure. be a little bit. The speed uh, <laughs> be a little bit much for them. But, but yeah, I mean, you look you look at it in the grand scheme of things, that's going to be the ultimate goal. I mean, if you go 11-1, and um, you know, for this football team and this program where it's been, where it was whenever they first came oh, to the gosh, FBS, yeah. I mean, that's a huge uh, step up, and uh, that'd be a big-time accomplishment for these and, guys. You know, I've, I've been telling people, you know, you look at the rest of our schedule, 10 games left, I think, you know, 9 out of 10 will be games that we're favored in. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one exception probably at Louisiana Monroe. Yeah, yeah. Um, But even then, I think that's definitely still a winnable game. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I like our chances in the rest of those. Lafayette will be tough. Arkansas State will be tough. But we get both of them here. Uh, hopefully we'll have good home crowds. I may just see where the fan excitement level is at. Yeah. I'm, I'm I mean, obviously there's a great too. crowd in Nashville. But, uh, you know, UK kind of draws a few more Western fans that are all sort of on the fringe to come yeah. out and cheer. So I'm hoping that, 
you know, when we see those Morgan States or Navies on the schedule too, <laughs> we'll still come out to the home games and be just as excited there. Yeah, that'd be interesting, especially with the Morgan State game coming up, yeah. you know, being our first home game. Because they're, you know, like SES teams, so, you know, we're kind of expected to kind of, you know, give them a little, you know, beat down or whatever. Mm, but, should be. But, you know, it'd be interesting to see the excitement of, uh, you know, the mm-hmm. football program, you know, even if it is a Morgan State, um, to kind of see the fans' excitement coming up, showing up to that game yeah. and watching uh, these guys in action and everything. But hopefully a lot of people will show up for the Navy game as well. You know, Navy, that's going to be a big game. It's going to be a good one, yeah. And I'll tell you what, that's another uh, kind of sleeper game that, you know, if, if they sleep on Navy a lot, and we're going to get beat, you yeah, know, because no, Navy's a tough team. You can't – I mean, you can prepare for the triple option that they run, but you really can't prepare for it either. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, that's going to be that's going to be the main uh, thing because just Navy, they run the triple option, and they run it well, you know. I'm still having nightmares of them running all over us in that game yeah, that a couple was, years ago. Yeah, that was a bad bad one. But, uh, but yeah, the, the garment's still out there. We can still possibly go 11-1, and one, and like I said, that would be a great accomplishment for this football team. But – we have some interaction on Twitter. I love Twitter interaction. Yeah. Riley McTavish, who looks like a dog, <laughs> says, if the turnovers had just left our D in a better position, we could have got, we could have fought them off. Regardless, our goals are still obtainable. That's a good point. That's a good we point. We were sitting here talking about that. Our goal is 11-1, and one, win the conference. Conference championship, definitely still within grasp. Now, if we win a conference championship, are we going to the New Orleans Bowl, or will they just go ahead and automatically give that to Louisiana Monroe or Lafayette? I, mean, I still think if one of them is <laughs> eligible for a bowl, that they're going to bring them in. But, I mean, I'll go to New Orleans. I, I, don't, I wouldn't be against that. I saw some <laughs> prediction today has us in the Poinsettia Bowl. Which is in San Diego. Okay, well, that works. I don't know if I want to make that road trip. Oh <laughs> goodness, who was it? Um, man, I don't remember. I know it was all the way out there. Okay, now we got Jerry Rickers who says that uh, he wants to know Bonita Rickers. I'm assuming this is his wife. I hope could be his sister, daughter. Some kind of relation. Wants to know who starts a tailback or how do we solve our fumble problems? Well, uh, we, that was actually kind of brought up today at the press conference. You know, if if uh, Leon Allen will start it at a uh, running back now Petrino kind of spun it like uh, you know it just depends on what package the other team starts mm-hmm. out with whether we'll go with Leon Allen or Antonio Andrews but obviously I think Andrews will always be the starter and even if he's not in there on the first play Antonio Andrews is going to be in there in a lot yeah. of plays you know um, I think it really just kind of like Petrino said it depends on the defensive setup you know if he wants to go with Allen right off the bat and get a little power run game going then he'll do that if he wants to stick with Andrews and get a little bit more of a mixture where he can catch balls out of the backfield and run the ball, he'll do that as well. You know, regardless of who's in the backfield on the first play, I don't really think it's going to matter because everybody's going to get their touches, especially Antonio Andrews. Yeah. So um, I really think Andrews won't lose his starting job. But, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if Allen's in there on the first series, right. you know, sometime as well. I mean, so. both, you know, those two guys are definitely emerging. Fumbles or not, they're still guys that have to have the ball in their hands. Exactly. And, you know, like you said, you know, the more – just depending on what package it's in, who we're going to get it to, uh, they're still probably going to have probably 20 touches apiece, I'd say. Yeah, and the fumble problems are like this. The fumble problems are just going to be solved by just repetition, and I'm sure the coaches are going to pay a lot of attention. They're probably going to have those big mats with pads on mm-hmm. them, and they're probably going to be swatting the ball a lot this yeah, week. You know, my thought was, you know, last year, two years ago, whenever it was, we had some fumble problems. You know, Coach Tagger made them walk around campus carrying footballs. Yeah. <laughs> the deal was if you took the football, you got a yeah. free ticket to the free game. So. To the game, yeah. That's a good way to sell the game, but I don't, I don't think Petrino's going to sure do that. I'm sure Petrino's probably not into those I think he's, I think he's got other ways to uh, <laughs> <I hope> so. <laughs> make him. <laughs> All right, we got, uh, <clears throat> we got Brandon Miller who says, do you, uh, I guess, he's, do you think the offense will, be, will have more confidence going into the game? Or do you think they'll still be a little shaky for the South Alabama game? Uh, I mean, if everything that you know the staff and you know all the people are saying that they've you know put it behind us, ready to move on, uh, which I, I think is probably true. I, I think we'll come out firing Saturday. Um, I don't think Brandon Dowdy is the kind of guy that's going to let that kind of bo- stuff bother him. I yeah. think he's going to you know put it behind him, learn from it, get better, and then move on and keep doing what he's supposed to do. Yeah, I think so as well. You know, we kind of touched on it a little bit earlier. You know, I think. You know, even Mitchell Henry was he was uh, part of the press conference today. He said, you know, the the vibe's really good in the locker room. So like we moved on. We're focused on South Alabama right now. So, you know, we're kind of focused on the task at hand, and that's winning the next game. So I don't really think it's going to be a big problem. I honestly, think against you know South Alabama. Um, like I said, I think it's the perfect ingredient for Western Kentucky to kind yeah. of bounce back, especially right. offensively. Um, you know, and you know Brandon Dowdy looked like he did against Kentucky, and then you know also get the tight ends involved who are experienced and then you get the wide receivers as well like Taiwan Taylor yep. and Nick Norris get them a little bit more experience as well you know because you know I don't know what the uh, 
I don't know if Taylor turned around too late on that ball that was bad up in the air, but, you know, I mean, obviously timing and stuff like that, it's something yeah. that a freshman wide receiver I mean, is going to be working on the second whole. college game. Exactly. Yeah. It's going to be something he's going to be working on the whole season, you know, mm -hmm. like players like Taylor and Norris and all them. So, I mean, that would just be another game that they can work on that. And I think it will be uh, – I think the offense will definitely bounce back, and we'll kind of see uh, Petrino Petrino s numbers. We'll have so. we'll have at least over 400 yards of total offense, I believe. So, and I think the defense will do their game too. I mean, the thing about South Alabama uh, offensively for them, they're coming off a really good offensive game. I think they had like 450 something yards, Something and that's like, like that, the most yeah. they've ever had against an FBS opponent. But they've got Ross Matheny, who's a dual threat quarterback. Um, of course, we had trouble with a little bit of trouble with Jalen Whitlow breaking off big yeah. runs in the Kentucky game. So that's gonna be something for the defense to watch out for against South Alabama. But uh, I think the defense do a really good job. We got enough athletes out there to contain uh, players like I think so. on South Alabama. And even though South Alabama is getting really, they're getting better. You know, yeah. like I said, they're a new program, trying to make their way up, and they're uh, first year in the Sun Belt, so they're gonna have their struggles. Right. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the offense will do uh, do very well next week. So, we talk about South Alabama. Want to give us a prediction, Woody? Um, As you look at your phone. Yeah, sorry, my phone keeps vibrating. To, trying to get the line. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, no, I'll say uh, I'm going to go WKU. We'll go 38-20. 38-20 WKU. I'm going to go WKU 45, South Alabama 17. I like it. All right. All right, we got about three minutes left, so – Hey, let's talk a little volleyball. A little volleyball, actually. They kind of they kind of dropped in the rankings this week. Dropped a little but bit. There, there's they still had good a competition, right? You know, we had our, our second national tournament where there were two other top twenty five teams in the tournament um, that weekend. You know, this was uh, Ohio State and uh, Florida State, and uh, we we played good matches against both of them. You know, they neither one of them swept us. We both took Ohio, uh, we State, to five took Ohio State to five sets. They're sets. ranked number uh, thirteen in the country now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Florida State beat us in four sets, so um, had good matches against them. Couldn't get the wins, but uh, ended up sweeping Florida a and this past weekend. Uh, so we dropped to number 21 overall in the standings, which uh, is still huge for our program. Yeah, it started at 21, up to 16, now back mm -hmm. down to 21. So. Right, and uh, you know USC, who's the other team that we lost to, they're up to number one in the country now. <laughs> yeah. They still haven't lost. Lost the number one team in the country. Uh, so, uh, you know, you know when we had Coach Hudson on, he said the schedule was going to be tough and that – you know, after the first two weeks, we could be playing great and still be yeah. 500. So 500, yeah. uh, sitting at four and three after the first seven games is still a pretty good spot to be in. And also, um, we got the volley the home game tomorrow night against Cincinnati, Cincinnati at seven o'clock. Yeah. So if you guys are out there and not doing anything tomorrow night, don't have any plans, go out and check out the volleyball team. It's the active ankle game of the week. I'm not sure what that is, but that's <laughs> okay. some kind of national sponsor that's, or something. Sounds kind of cool. Um, but yeah, we also have uh, you know, go ahead. Buddy. Right. Cincinnati's been a good rival for us the last couple of years. We played them in some NCAA tournaments and um, have some good matches with them. So it should be a fun match to go out and watch for yeah. sure. And also uh, home games. We got the WKU Invitational WKU this weekend. WKU Invitational this weekend. We've got UNLV, Ohio, and Virginia coming in. Uh, be a round robin with all four of those. Yeah. Everybody will play everybody. Um, let's see. Our games are going to be seven o'clock Friday night. 11 a.m. Saturday and 7 p.m. on Saturday night. Okay, sounds good. So, like I said, if you're not busy this weekend, go check out some volleyball as well. It's good time for it. Volleyball team is going to be at home uh, tomorrow night and this weekend. So uh, definitely check that out. And real quick, we got less than a minute left. Tell us about it. Give us some soccer updates. Uh, soccer had, had a tough weekend. Tied Austin P. Lost to Memphis. Uh, still close games. Uh, their biggest thing now is just finding somebody to score goals. They only scored three goals through five yeah. matches. So. Um, still playing a lot of freshmen. Once they get that sort of taken care of, they'll start winning games. And yeah, did you go to any of those games? I, I wasn't able to go to those, but uh, okay. I kept up with them. But it sounds like we're improving. Just like I said, you got to find those goal yeah. scores. To you think uh, we'll see a us. lot more wins than every Sun Belt? I think so. so we're still, stars. I think, the favorites in the Sun Belt. So okay. good, good, good. I think we're still sitting all right. All right. That sounds good, man. Sounds good. So uh, also we got the Capital One Challenge, mascot challenge. Go so vote for Big Red. Go vote for Big Red. <laughs> And take down Cam the Ram. <laughs> can't take down Cam the Ram. We'll be back next week for another t episode of Top of Talk. Hopefully we'll be talking about a win. That's right. Go Tops. Go Tops. Hey, Hilltopper Nation. Tune in each week for Coach's Corner with WKU head football coach Bobby Petrino. You'll get an in-depth look at the 2013 Hilltopper team, meet other coaches and players, and see the highlights from every game. That's right, here on Coach's Corner with Bobby Petrino. Our dad believed that we can use television to inform children and adults in a positive way. And that's still a huge part of the work we do each day here. And we're parents too now. And as parents, we see that you have to make important choices for your children every day. And when it comes to children's television, PBS inspires families to learn about their world. Supporting PBS ensures that all children have this opportunity. This is why we're here. To help all children be more.
Local presentation of this program is made possible in part through a grant from Calvert Spring Water Company, providing five-gallon natural spring water for commercial and residential use. Information at 1-877-619-COOL. Rick Steves Europe is made possible by generous support from... Over 250 cities in 40 countries including one you'll never forget. We know why you fly. We're American Airlines. And by...